This video is about how not to fly your drone on an active volcano. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but let me explain how this video can help you. So although I attempted to fly my drone on top of an active volcano, really this video is about what not to do, what mistakes not to do when flying your drone. And this video really applies to any place that you fly. So it could be near a nice river, it could be near a nice rice field, it could be near a waterfall, it could be any place that you find scenic that you enjoy flying your drone. But in this case, I know it's an extreme example, it was on top of a volcano, an active volcano. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my mistakes so you don't make them. So let's get right into it. So this was a few weeks back, I was in Bali. Now here's the thing, normally when I go to a place, scenic area or a tourist location, I normally go by myself or just with a friend. A lot of times I just fly by myself because I like having the time and the focus just to do my shooting because I take it very seriously. The number one thing you want when you fly, at least for me, is to really get the shot, to nail the shot. That's the most important thing. Of course for this, flying on top of a volcano combine two of the things I really love, which is being out in nature and beautiful places and flying my drone. So being able to use my filmmaking photography ability to capture some place that's really beautiful and find the essence of it through your drone. So that's what I was trying to do. So in Bali, there's two big volcanoes and one of them is called Mount Batur. So I really wanted to go to this Mount Batur. The only way I could get to the top was going through a guide or going through a tourist group and a tourist agency. So I was like, all right, I'll just sign up for this tour group. So I went around town, talked to a few different places. I went to one place, it seemed really good. The guy seemed nice, showed me all the pictures. Also had a good price and the group was relatively small. It's like five or six people, I think six people max. So I was like, all right, that's not, that's cool. We'll do that. And I asked him, I said, look, the main point of my trip, I want to capture these beautiful shots of the volcano with my Mavic 2 Pro. And I asked him, I said, hey, will I be able to get the drone shots? How much time will I have? And he explained to me, oh yeah, no problem. You'll have an hour and a half at the top. We'll go real early, you'll climb to the top and you can go all around the crater and walk around, get all the shots you want and no problem. So I was like, this is great. Plus I'll meet a few new people. This is cool. Let's do it. So I checked the weather and I picked a morning where it said it wasn't going to rain. And normally it doesn't rain in the morning. Normally in Bali it rains in the afternoon and the evenings. So I thought, no problem, it's not gonna rain. This will be a beautiful day. And sure enough, the night before I was going, it starts raining and it rains all night. And I wake up at 2 a.m. cause they were gonna pick me up at 2 a.m. around 2, 2.15. So I'm waiting outside in the pitch dark and it's pouring rain. So my first tip is if you're gonna fly your drone, make sure you check the weather forecast, see if you can have a backup day. One app that I like using is called UAV Forecast. It's really helpful because it also tells you the wind profiles. So a lot of times the wind, let's say it's 10, 15 miles per hour on the ground level, but then it could be 30 miles per hour, just a few hundred feet up, or it could be gusting to like a 30 miles per hour, which if you have something like the Mavic Mini, that could really prevent you from flying it or possibly crashing. And then have an alternative day. In this situation, I couldn't really go another day because I already paid my money. I already had the group. The group was gonna go no matter what. So if you can, try to set another day or another time to shoot. So sort of have a backup plan if the weather and the lighting isn't the way exactly that you want. That would be great under ideal circumstances, but under this circumstance, had no choice. So I was waiting out there in the rain. So now they pick me up in this van, get in there with all my drone gear, and there's five other people. There's three girls from Spain, one girl from Peru, and one guy from Germany. Now everyone's really young. Everything was good. I was really excited about this trip. Everyone seemed really cool. We drove two hours around these really windy roads and then we finally came to this parking lot. They dropped us off there and then that's where our guide was. Now our guide was only 19 years old. He was gonna take us up the mountain. So that's what he does all the time. Now this wasn't a tremendously strenuous hike. 
but it wasn't easy at the same time as well. And you certainly need the guide because you can make a wrong turn and get lost. And a few years ago, they told me someone went up there, attempted to go up there, and they actually died. They fell off a cliff or something, or I don't know exactly what happened, but they ended up dying on the volcano. So it's a good thing we had the guide. You don't, definitely don't want to die flying your drone. So I was happy to have the guide, but normally I like going by myself. So if you can go by yourself or with some friends or with some people who are serious about what you're doing. Now I'll explain more, that'll make more sense towards the end of the story. So as we go up, we're hiking, it starts raining. So we're hiking pretty much the entire way up, it was raining. Now it's, it was raining light, then it rained heavy. So I had to lug all my gear. So I had to take off all my gear, put a trash bag around it. So if you have a waterproof bag or if you have, if you have a way to cover your bag without physically holding it, that can be a lot helpful. For me, I'm kind of overprotective. I put two garbage bags around all my gear and then held it like this, like a baby. So it was kind of like I was walking up the volcano with like a fourth grader and I was holding them in my arms. So that's basically, it was not fun. Plus it was raining. And on top of that, it's Indonesia, so it's really hot. So I was sweating. So I'm sweating, it's raining. I got this bag in my arms like this, but I'm like, whatever. I'm not gonna hold the entire group back because of all my gear and my stuff. So I just sucked it up and kept going because I was really excited to get to the top and I was hopeful that the rain would stop by the time we got to the top. We get to the top finally and it starts to let up. So I'm like, yes, after all that effort, it's finally gonna pay off. And we're just waiting there. We got there, I would say around six o'clock, maybe five of six. So it's about a two hour hike to the top of the volcano. And then the sun starts coming up. And right before the sun came up, what I decided to do was to take my drone and fly it and just kind of survey the land. So this was actually a good thing. This wasn't a mistake that I made. So this is something I always do. Let's say 6.30, the sun's gonna be the ideal lighting conditions. So I like to fly my drone a little before that and just kind of survey the land. So that's what I did. I flew my drone, just lifted it up, there wasn't too much wind, so it's still really nice. And I kind of just flew it around and just kind of saw what the contours of the volcano and the whole area looked like from above. So that way, when the sun was perfect, I'd have the perfect money shot. So I won't be looking for the right angle, the right distance and so forth to shoot. So one thing I like to do is either, if you can do it the day before to the location and scout it out, so to speak, and look around and see where exactly you want to shoot that's a good way to do it you could also go online there's a lot of apps that you could look at and this way you can see where exactly you want to fly what mode and what camera setting you want to use and so forth so that's what i did i kind of looked around saw which way i wanted to shoot the different angles i wanted to capture and that was really good. So all these shots here, you see, I'm not trying to fly perfectly. I'm not trying to get that money shot. I'm just trying to see what the volcano looks like so I can plan my shot. Now, unfortunately for me, mother nature was not behind me on this day. So when the sun started rising, the wind also started picking up. So I tried to take off my drone right when the sun was rising and the wind was just ferocious. It was probably, I'd say like 35 miles per hour, maybe faster, I'd say between 30 to 40 miles per hour. I could take it up but I, I didn't want to take it up more than a couple feet because it was already starting to shake and go crazy. So then I just brought it down. So what I did was I just held my Mavic 2 in my hand. I tried to move it around and just get some shots. So as an alternative, if you can't fly your drone like I did, you can just hold it in your hands and try to just pan and just get some shots. If you're on top of a mountain or someplace like this. Now, obviously if you're in a low, in a valley or on the ground, not on top of a mountain or a volcano, then you can't get kind of the same shot. So this doesn't apply for that. But since I was really high, I just kind of used my drone. And since it has a stabilizer on it, I can move it around. And you can see the wind here. It's kind of crazy how windy it got. But I was like, it's okay. We got time. The wind will die down or I can go to a different spot. Maybe go beneath the crater, fly down where the wind won't be as much. Maybe part of the crater will block the wind. I was just trying to get some shots of the sunrise and just kind of, I was thinking I'll just wait it out. So the sun starts rising. I wasn't really too concerned at this point, just trying to enjoy it. And also about that time, these monkeys came out. So I love monkeys. The monkeys in the wild are actually friendly. Whereas when I was in the monkey forest, the monkeys in captivity are actually mean. These monkeys were super nice. I had a few bananas for my trip. So I held one out and then the monkey climbed up me and 
they got some shots. Now, one thing you can learn, there's this Russian girl right in front of me. Now, she was taking some beautiful photos with her iPhone 11, and I looked at the photos, I was like, wow, those are amazing. I want those shots with the monkey. I gave her my website, my email address, my phone number, and she never sent me the photos. So. One thing I'll say is if you want the photos, make sure you use your camera. Unfortunately, most people aren't reliable, aren't cool like that. I try to send photos or videos. If I tell a person I'm gonna do it, do it. So one thing I'd advise is if you're gonna take photos of someone, you get their contact information, send them the photos, send them the video just out of courtesy. So those photos are in the ether, they're somewhere else and I'll never see them again. But that's the way it goes. So luckily I have my GoPro, so I got some shots here, but not as good as the ones that she took. So if you can, another mistake I made, have someone, a travel companion or someone to shoot B-roll or behind the scenes footage for you. Or if you wanna get photos of yourself, make sure you have someone in the group that'll take photos. Now, I had my guy shoot a little bit with the GoPro, but he didn't really know what he was doing, so it was okay. I have high standards, so I'm always kind of critical of that. So make sure you get someone who knows cameras, knows video, knows how to film and that sort of thing. So at this point, I've been on top of the volcano maybe 15, 20 minutes max. And then the guy says, everyone wants to go down to the bottom, so we're gonna leave now. I said, what, what are you talking about? Like, uh, I signed up for this tour because I wanna stay at the top. I know there's a lot of other people up here. Why are we leaving? What's going on? He's like, oh, they said they wanna leave. They all wanna leave now, so since there's only six of us, if they all wanna leave, we have to go by the majority vote, we have to leave. So it's not my country, not my tour. Like, I was really upset, but there really wasn't anything I could do. So I just had to leave, and I'm like, you know, I missed out on the opportunity to really fly my drone. I maybe flew my drone for just a few minutes, like maybe five minutes max, and that was it. And that was just to survey the land. I didn't really get to shoot anywhere. And we just hiked down fast. As we hiked down, the, there was no wind, so I could have flown my drone. I mean, the lighting wasn't perfect, but I could have got some, still some great shots. And I couldn't do that because they were all walking really fast and just want to leave. So I didn't really get it. It was kind of strange to me. I guess maybe it's like the younger generation, maybe they just want to like uh, take a few selfies and then they want to leave, like share that with friends. They don't want to enjoy it. So one thing I like to do, and one mistake I thought this group made, was to always plan time to get the shot. And then once I get the hero shot for wherever I'm shooting, I like to take half an hour, an hour, as long as I want, just to enjoy the scenery and the beauty of the location. Sometimes when I'm shooting, I'm so intense on getting the shot that you don't really enjoy it as much as when you just put down your drone, put down your camera, and you just enjoy the moment. So I like to do both. And in this situation, I really didn't get to do either. I mean, it was kind of just like, paid all this money, we hiked two hours in the rain, we drove two hours in the darkness, I got up at 2 a.m. and we're just gonna stay for like 15 minutes and leave. It, it, it just didn't make too much sense to me. So my biggest thing that you, biggest mistake and biggest thing you can learn is make sure you talk to other people, maybe read reviews online. I, I didn't do that. I kind of talked to the, this person who ran this tour guide who seemed like an honest person and maybe he was. Maybe it was just this young guide was being told what to do by his higher ups and they just wanted to make money, which seems unfortunate, but it did, It wasn't really a good tour because what's the point of hiking up a volcano, staying there for five minutes, 15 minutes, and then and leaving. So if you're gonna go in a group, make sure you're with like-minded people. I would find other people who are interested in flying drones or interested in cameras or people who just have patience. Now, sometimes you might have to pay extra money. Now, I could have paid for a guy just to take me but I would have had to pay the cost of six different people because they don't go up just by with one person. They only go up in the groups. So if you have a lot of money, it's worth it because when you fly, you can't be in a hurry. You really have to take time and adjust to the situation, especially with flying your drones, the lighting can change very quickly. For someone to like hurry it, it just doesn't work. It's sort of like, you know, if you're a cook, you're like, oh, we need the food now. Well, to cook a really good meal, it takes time, you can't rush it. Same thing with flying your drone. To get the really good shots, you can't really rush it. Sometimes, you know, you can get lucky and everything can be perfect right when you get there, but that, that's usually not the case. You usually have to wait or you have to plan it out. And then even after you get done 
getting the shot that you want, don't you want to enjoy it? Don't you want to sit there and just enjoy nature, enjoy the day, enjoy the moment? I know certainly with the coronavirus, people appreciate the moment, appreciate things a lot more. At least I think they do. At least I do, being outdoors or being able to travel and do these different things that a lot of us aren't able to do now. And then my last tip is to have an alternative plan. So although I wanted to fly on top of this volcano, it turned out because it was so windy, I probably could have flown my drone just a few hundred feet below or maybe even 50 feet below just down the path, but obviously we had to leave really quickly, so I wasn't able to do that. But if you're able to fly further down or have an alternative plan, sometimes the alternative can be better than where you first wanted to fly. So always have a couple different locations where you can fly. That way, if the wind happens, if there's a bunch of people in the shot and you don't want people in the shot, things like this, you can adapt and change. So try to have a couple of different locations within the area that you wanna shoot. That way, if this place doesn't work out, you can go over here. This place doesn't work out, you can go over here. And sometimes you can use all three of those locations to combine them into your final edit that might give you a better perspective and a better video than if you just shot at one place. So I like to get all different types of looks and try to go do as much shooting as you can in that location during the lighting and time frame that you have. Now the other mistake I made, but obviously it wasn't my fault, is to shoot during an extended period of time. So I like to shoot for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And from sunrise to an hour and a half later, the lighting conditions are gonna change uh, dramatically. So you're gonna get that nice soft golden look in the morning, and then it's, the light's gonna become cooler, a little more white in tone, much brighter. So you're gonna get totally different looks. Maybe you preferred on that volcano, maybe the lighting was better early in the morning, you preferred, that's your style or maybe you prefer an hour later when it's a little brighter out. Make sure you prepare for an extended shooting time just in case the weather changes as well. All right, that's the end of my story. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and also don't forget to subscribe so you can get more drone videos. So over the last couple of days, I've updated my drone gear guide. It has all my favorite recommended drones, all my favorite recommended accessories and software, completely updated for May 2020. Just click right over there. Or you could go to brettgaramella.com backslash guide and you can download that free guide and get more helpful tips and tutorials that I'll be sending you. I'm Brett Garamella, the Drone Pilot Pro. And remember, fly like a pro.